Hello everyone, this is Johannes and this is Cinema and you are watching Board Gaming Ramblings and today we are taking a look at the Isoparian Guard. This is a huge new campaign game from Eric Bitterman and Sky Kingdom Games. It is a one to two player game and it's a co-op game. That's true and it's, it's a long monitor game and it says to be around like two to three hundred hours which might be a huge positive or negative for you already so you might already be like oh that's too long i have turned it off because that is a lot of stuff yes. we have obviously not played the whole thing because that would be impossible while also having a life and playing other board games because we have a youtube channel uh, and also this is as always these kind of campaign game reviews are going to have less pictures than or um, usual reviews because of spoilers and we're not going to do any story spoilers we are going to talk about some things that we have like experienced with the game so of course if you don't want to know anything before you go into the game then don't watch the video but yeah, hopefully basically. it will not be any spoilers at all yes. this was a kickstarter campaign yeah. uh, a couple of years ago and now it's getting ready to um, uh, to get no it's uh, to deliver to the backers <laughs> English is a language uh, and we were so lucky to get sent a copy uh, straight from China from the factory yes. to do a review and that's the video you are watching right now. So let's just jump into it shall we? As always what do we start with? An overview. Yes. I was gonna jump ahead and we're gonna do an overview. Very short overview this time. The Isofarian Guard is a open world, very much feels like it is inspired by um, Skyrim and other maybe some JRPGs. Uh, you're moving around on a map and you are fighting, a lot of fighting. We're going to talk more about the combat and how that works later. But you are moving around doing combat and then you can uh, get ingredients, you can craft items, you will then go into story modes, which is you can listen to from the Forteller app or you can just read it in the book and you will then get get deeper deeper into the story which will then probably be some boss fights and stuff going on and then you're going to continue on this is not this is kind of in the same way as tainted grail as not being a uh, scenario based yeah. game it's more of a, it's 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 um, divided into campaigns which are divided into chapters so you're going to play through these chapters things can happen and you're going to be told like oh no, no you're in the next chapter and you're going to continue on and the enemies get more and more hard the more into the game you get i think that's like is a kind of logical yeah. overview of the game yes so let's talk about other stuff the thing i was trying to go to let's start talking about the first thing we talk about which is artwork and components i think that this game looks amazing overall the production mm -hmm. is super solid i love the components and the quality of this um, like yeah all of the things i like the insert the way that it all fits in the box mm -hmm. it makes teardown and setup very very fast and simple i think that we set it up in 10 minutes yeah. and took it down in like five minutes so i'm super happy with the quality and artwork in this game yeah and it, it's kind of perfect the, the the amount of time like this is one of this is the simplest campaign game to take up and and, and and tear down again and that's kind of like a very high positive for me in these kind of games because it makes it easier to get back to the table yes there's a couple of things like you have a big the game takes a lot of space like yes. we have a huge table and it takes up a lot of that table. There is like a thing you can do, which you can in the reference guide here, the map, and it's not a spoiler because the map is not anything, it's not hidden here. You could just play with this. Oh, yeah. Which you just put it on the table and yes. you play with that and it would work perfectly. Yeah. Uh, and the thing is that the, the, the map is very big, but it's not really big enough for you to use the miniature that you're supposed to move mm. around on it because some of these nodes that they as they call them are very close together so when you place and it's bigger on the actual map and when you place the miniature you're going to place it on top of two or even three of these and you have to kind of remember so we are just using a little token and, and in that regards we could have just used this but oh, yeah. i like i like the look of the map we also have the play mat which is kind of weird because it's longer and it's not just adding some 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 artwork without adding anything to it yeah. but i um, we have it so we, we're using it but all in all it's a stellar production it has a lot of poker chips i read somewhere so this is source person on the internet and that it's the same poker chips that chip theory games use the very high quality yeah. poker chips that you use and you're going to use them a lot in the game so two thumbs up for the production and, yes. and, and the quality and uh, the game also has a rule book 
it has a reference guide, it has an index, it has a five campaign books, and it also has a quest book. So if you don't like to read, this is not a game for you, or get for teller, and they will read for you. But this game has a lot of words in it. So let's start by talking a bit about, as we, we said, that the rule book here is kind of divided into two. And reading the rule book, I felt like most of it was answered, and I, I enjoyed the rule book, but in all of these games, you're going to end up having questions. And then the index is going to be very helpful because it's like, oh, how, what is this actually? And this is a normal index with, with all just like keywords and a lot of different things that you need to know. Other than that, the, the people behind this game are very active. Like if you get this game and you're not on their Discord, jump into that Discord channel uh, and the server and they will be very helpful in yes. giving you, uh, helping you out with, with, with rules questions that you might have. It's not the campaign game we have played where we had most questions uh, but it's also not the ones where we had the least questions and i feel like it's very hard and i, I think it's still going to be a while before we get any of these campaign games where we have no questions asked yeah, like where you understand true. everything and you do nothing wrong so i think that I, that is great so play time on player count yeah we have played approximately 22 hours mm -hmm. and we are maybe halfway through campaign one we yeah think. maybe a bit more like we're yes. guessing that as uh, something like that and it's hard we know we can't really say like oh it's too long or it's too short no. but one thing i want to add there which i like is that you can really split it up in any kind of amount of time that you yes, want to I love that. because the game has in, in a very nice save feature mm. uh, and it also is uh, the way of, the way you pack down the game is that you can just you have like a character sheet with with uh, the life counter and all the different things and when you there's like this game trace that you just put on top and it sits there and you can shake it around and but you won't because the game is like 20 kilos so you're not gonna oh no i shaked it around you're just gonna move it and put it on the floor and be happy that you didn't lose your back once more so yeah i really i really enjoy that uh, and it adds to the, the playability of the game yes and uh, like like gameplay wise also mm -hmm. it's very easy to get into once mm -hmm. you've gotten the hang of it which also makes it very approachable for us to just take it up play yes. it for not that long or not that many days in a row but still have a lot of fun and i think also that the great player aids contributes to that mm -hmm. because i have used this one player aid a lot mm -hmm. and it's so super duper duper helpful i love it to bits and it, like all the combat flows it's listed on there and it's super duper helpful yeah there, and there's a lot of information in this game yes. we're kind of going into gameplay now so i'm just going to talk a little bit about like like you're saying like much of the information here are going to be in this index and it's going to be kind of hard so before we're going to talk a bit about combat but just first let's talk a bit about this because this is like a world yeah. And in this world, there's going to be places where you can go fishing. There's going to be places where you can harvest and wood or you can go mining. And depending on where you are, you're going to get different things. And depending on each single node you are, you're going to meet different enemies. And all of that is in here. And this is a lot. This is mm. like when you first start getting into the game, it, this is like because this is one of those games that is obviously inspired by a video game. Yeah. And it could have been a video game and you wouldn't have all of this i don't mean that it should be because i like the tactile thing of board games that's kind of why we play board games but it has so much information let's say and this isn't spoiler because you're free to go and look at this let's say oh i need some new armor yeah i'm gonna go then and i'm gonna look at the city index and i'm gonna go to let's see mirror I'm going to go to the blacksmith in mirror and it's going to show me all the things that are available in blacksmith in mirror and then i'm going to see like okay i need these things i'm going to write that down and then we're going to go and hunt for that and we're going to go and find oh the ore where can we find that we have to go to that place and find the ore and then we're going to have to find an enemy that drops the horn and then when we know which enemy drops the horn and we're going to try and go and grind for that enemy to find enough horns that we need to build this thing and I know a lot of people already have fallen out of this because this is something in most role playing games that I play on video games, I never craft stuff. Yeah, I, I would not have tolerated it if it wasn't a really good game otherwise. Uh -huh. And spoiler alert, but it, it's really good. Um, but this 
thing isn't my favorite because when I'm looking for like okay what can we get in mirror it's so much like back and forth mm -hmm. with the things and I'm not good at remembering stuff as well so if I need a new armor I'm flipping through that one a lot yeah but I like 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 uh, the last time we played now we were kind of like okay we're too weak we need stuff yes so then we were like okay we need these things and yeah, these things we and we plan. route it down and we may okay we're gonna go over here because then we can harvest that and if we go over there and we have that and we can go and deposit it and then we're gonna go and we're gonna yeah. upgrade our stuff and all of that is it's kind of fun when you kind of make a plan but it's yes. important to write stuff down or else it's going to be very overwhelming with all of this information let's talk a bit about the combat yes because the top combat is a huge part of the game uh, and this is where i feel like for some people they will love it some will tolerate it and some will not like it and, and combat is a big factor of the game and i feel like a good combat system is important in these kind of campaign games yeah. like we didn't like really when we most of these games we don't really like them in the beginning because we don't know them uh, and this was no no exception in the beginning i was like i don't understand anything going on and very briefly the combat is a bag building mechanism um you're gonna have some cards that have abilities you're gonna have like a basic attack and all of that and in the beginning of your turn of combat you're gonna pull um, chips from a bag and you have different colored chips so only the like black chips are the ones that count towards your maximum amount you draw and you can manipulate how many you are able to draw each turn uh, and then you have other both positive and negative chips that you can draw some are one-time abilities some are like if you get poisoned in this game you feel like oh i draw the poison i lose a life and then it goes ba back in the bag <laughs> at the end like oh, no. you know, and, and you have that poison you you had to heal that somewhere i don't know how but you have to heal that before you die of drawing all this poison stuff uh, and so the bag is kind of remembering what you're doing. So when you, you pull this up and when you're done pulling them, uh, you will uh, apply them to different cards. You will then use the action points markers that you have and activate the cards. And depending on the characters, and that may then end up flipping the cards. So the next round you have different abilities. You can set up combos and stuff like that. Yeah, I hope that makes sense. Mm. So what do you think about the combat? I think it's simple enough to mm -hmm. make it go fairly quick, mm -hmm. but then again, interesting enough to make me think about my decisions. Um, I think that also the way that the enemies take their turns mm -hmm. are like a simplistic version of what we are doing. Yeah. And I think that really is, is very ideally sold in this game. Uh, I love that you can actually run from some combats mm -hmm. if you not want to uh, do them or do you think them to, you know, they are too hard mm -hmm. and I feel like um, s sometimes it can be a little repetitive. I don't yep. like like these grinding in JRPGs nope. in, in general and sometimes when we are on the lookout for some uh, horns. Uh, yeah, horns for example I can be like get me the enemy that we need because I'm sick of this combat stuff. Yeah. I feel like it's it's gonna be like it's it's a lot of the game. So you are you're gonna move somewhere, then you're gonna meet probably a new enemy, and you have to find the card decks of them and place them in these uh, trays Holders, that you yeah. use, and then you're gonna fight it. Might take like three minutes. Then you're gonna move pay, to, put away. all that away, Check move the to the next space. Minutes. Yeah. And do it all over yep. again. Usually when we are in like the same area, you can meet the same enemy over and over. So we don't really take them away. Yes. Before we know the next enemy, so it would not be taking it and putting it up. Mm. And this is the part of the game I feel like it will kind of make or break the game for you. Mm. Uh, because this, most of the game is going to be doing this combat. Uh, we're going to come to the storytelling all of that soon. But I feel like for me, it is just enough. It's, it's still not after 22 hours to the uh, it's not like for example when we played both when we played uh, sleeping gods mm -hmm. and roleplay adventures i was kind of in the end roleplay adventures not so much but but there were the sleeping gods like just letting you doing the combat yeah. even though i liked it in the beginning uh, but so far i feel like the combat here is, is pretty good and i feel like you have gotten a good feeling of how it is uh, i'm going to get a little spoilery now very little but i think it's a it's, very it's important not a spoiler, spoiler. No. Uh, um, I I've played with a character now that feels a little weak in the beginning oh, yeah. and my combat experience uh, for like the first half of what we have played now mm -hmm. was not very good 
good. It was exciting in the beginning because it's brand new, but you feel like like the other player is it's doing like all of the stuff, tank, and yeah. you are just like, oh, I got to do things now. Now he's dead. Um, so, but but it gets better, and I, I like it now. Yeah, he's more of like a supportive character, especially yes. in the beginning. And I, I really understand how you felt about that. Uh, luckily, it got better when you got a bit more cool Yay. stuff going on. <laughs> there's also side quests. Not going to talk much about them, but there's like nice stuff you can do. And I feel like both the crafting and the side quests are kind of essential. You cannot yeah. kind of you cannot rush story mode in this game because you're going to be too weak to, to yeah. fight the stuff that it's you need to, hard, to fight. It's very hard, very fast. <laughs> uh, let's talk about the story yes. and the writing of this game because the combat is good. But if the story then is horrible and the writing is horrible, there's really no game here because it's a very, very narrative driven game. So what do you feel? It is. I think that the story so far is very, very well written. Mm -hmm. I'm very um, engaged in the world and I think that it, they have tried to paint a, like, a, like a picture of how the world works and I, I think it's cool with all the drama that is going on in mm -hmm. this universe that it is. Uh, in the beginning the story felt a little like, oh, you're there yes. and you kind of was like, what? what is going on? But it was kind of unique. Um, now that we're into it, I'm, I'm, I'm excited for it. Yeah, it was kind of taking the route of dropping you right into the action yes. in a way that felt rushed. Yeah. Uh, so like the first hour or something, you were like, oh, we don't understand what's going on. We don't really, do we don't understand why they're doing this. We don't understand what's going on. And then after a little while, we got more into it, which is probably what you just said. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I agree with that. I felt like even though like the writing is good in the beginning, I, I would have liked to know a little bit more about like the surroundings of what was happening before you got like, boom, yeah. something mm. happened. That was kind of like a... Stuff. Yeah. major plot point basically what i do like and i can say that without we even played it uh, is that there's five campaigns in the games and it is very open about this that the four first campaigns are happening at the same time so you kind of when we're done with campaign one we're basically going to jump all the way back to weak enemies and and weak characters but new characters and then we were kind of wanting to go jump into that to see yeah. how the combat was going to be different because it sounds like not saying that we should, but saying that you might want to do that. But we, spoiler alert, want to continue playing the game. And then I don't want to spoil it for myself. And uh, the Foreteller app here is oh, very great. good. It's so good. Uh, we talked a bit about it in the Frosthaven review as well, if you haven't seen that. And I felt like the the narrator here is better for me. Yeah. Uh, and, and there's still a couple of places where the we're listening to on our Sonos, where the background noises is a bit high. Uh, higher mix than the the uh, um, the, 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 the dialogue, yes. um, but other than that, it's I think like it's I think it's essential for this game yeah. because there's going to be like five minute things, there's going to be seven minute things, there's going to be nine minute things. There's going to be a yeah. lot of reading and with the sound effects, and they're saying there's going to be. Um, there was this boss fight we did where there was like special boss fight music, yeah, and there's going to be cool. different music for different areas you're in. So all of that's going to be. They're saying there's like 15 hours of sound in, in the Fortella rap, which is amazing. Yeah, absolutely. The story so far isn't like something completely new. Nope. It feels like something you have kind of, oh, this seems familiar. Mm -hmm. Taken a little, yeah, it, it's not like something I've read before, but no. it's, it has some uh, classical elements to it. A classical fantasy say. story, I yes. would say. But with some fun characters, there's some comedy, there's some... We laughed, we... Yeah. I haven't cried, but there's like different emotions in it that I... <laughs> I actually <laughs> cried. <laughs> You did? Yes, I did. Oh yeah, there was yeah. this one time. That's yes. true. Uh, we did cry easily. Yeah. Uh, but it was, uh, it's been nice like flow emotions as well. Let's talk a bit about the gameplay loop. I feel like we kind of have touched on it already. Yeah. Um, like this is more like a way, a recap kind yeah. of of how the game is. It's very combat heavy. Yeah. You kind of read the story, do combat, read the story, do combat. Or, um, hear me out. You go somewhere, almost die, you go somewhere else, you die, you end up back where you started, you go somewhere, you die, you go somewhere else, 
you don't have enough money to rest at the inn. So <laughs> you at least get the experience every time. So mm. you can progress. But it's, in the beginning, sometimes it's very rough. <laughs> yeah, in the beginning, it was kind of hard. Absolutely. Yes. Like, like I... one step forward, two steps back kind of feeling. Yes, for sure. But we come to like a part where it's now it's going to feeling a bit easier, but yeah. still hard. I, like, I feel like the gameplay loop is, is nice. It's kind of so far not trying to spoil but so far it's kind of like you go around you fight combats you do side stuff then you go to like the narrative part of the chapter you do that you do some combats you maybe fight a boss and then you go out again and do yes. some other stuff and you go back and do that one thing i feel like i need to mention which i haven't mentioned a lot we mentioned crafting and all of that but there's also many uh, you can you have skill trees for different characters yeah. that you use experience points or Lux Essence, which is called here, to, to level up, to get new, more HP, to get new skill cards, to get uh, permanent chips in your bag. And I really like that you can like small leveling up all the time, so yes. you feel stronger and stronger. It's not like you have to play like five hours and then you do like, oh, well, I'm level two now yeah, and you get true. a new card. And I, I really like that. I agree. Let's talk about weight and who is it for. Uh, this is a one and two player only game, mm -hmm. so obviously if you're a bigger group and never one or two that isn't for you True. it is a long campaign game yeah. uh, and i think that is a campaign game that you should be like mm, invested in. yeah yeah and you should be like um what do you call it um focused or like ready to take it to the very end i think it will be mm -hmm. like it seems like a story that it will be evolving throughout these these chapters and yeah. these different campaigns and mm -hmm. um, i'm looking forward to learn more about that it is simpler than uh, some other campaign games yeah. that we have played i Absolutely. think that is a big positive for mm -hmm. me makes it easier to get back to it if you take a little break from it and also easier to play just a little uh, amount of time and also uh, tear down the setup as we said um yes um yeah also if you need something to hold while you're doing your squats you can do this and it's going to be like a 20 kilo big box that you can use and get stronger uh but i agree with you like it's it's one of the more it's one of those games like kind of like gloomhaven frosthaven i know so well that if we take a month off we can just sit down and play it and i'm pretty sure we can do this with this as well because there's fewer rules than most of these games yep. so much easier so it's kind of like if you have space for it and you're looking for a heavy narrative nice like relaxing sitting down just enjoying this story pulling some stuff out doing a combat that is fun evolving your carrot and all of that i think this is going to be a game that you will enjoy so final thoughts before we do that if anything in this video was helpful for you then it would mean a lot to us if you gave us a victory point what is this victory point, Johannes? You might ask, and Stunua is here for a tutorial. Yes, we need victory points to win the game of life and YouTube, and we get them when you subscribe. So click that subscribe button and the bell button to get notifications. So let's do final thoughts. Yes, I like so much about this game. Mm -hmm. uh, we have talked so much about the positives already, but I think also the negatives for me is that some of the like mechanical things mm -hmm. um, are <laughs> much more practical if this was a video game of uh, over a board game and also it has a th thing uh, that I'm not too keen about in video games either and that is like going around and grinding mm -hmm. a lot and you have to do that in this yes. game and I respect that but for some people including kind of a little bit me mm -hmm. it is my thing yep. but when it's fun and uh, like when we have this big cool combats that last more than like three seconds that I, I can also do something and I have a lot of fun. So overall, I think this is a solid production. I think that it really does what it's supposed to do, but just have these things in mind when you think about if this is for you Absolutely. or not. I think this is a great game. I'm going to give it an eight. Fantastic. I I think it's a lot of fun. I, I agree with everything you're saying. Like it's, it's gonna be very simple, I think, for people to see if this is something they will like or not. I, I feel like many solo players and couples will really like this game and, and I like that game because of that it's kind of I like sitting down playing Skyrim but this is that tactile I like the bag building I, I don't get the same feeling of hitting 
X and and hitting somebody or yeah. or R two and L two in Skyrim with with a sword, and I do like drawing that. I was like, yay, that's the chip I need, or drawing that poison and dying, uh, and that's kind of exciting in a different way. I I agree with kind of the grindy part of it, but I like that the side quests are there to make it so that the some of these bonuses and things you mm. need you will get in a fun way instead of just having to go around the, the map and doing doing different uh, basic activities all the time uh, i like many aspects of the game real like the story the foreteller app i think this is and this is like the, for me the biggest compliment this is a game i want to continue playing after we've done a review and that yes. almost never happened we're already doing it in Frosthaven and this I want this to be like the other campaign game that we play uh, I'm gonna give it an 8.5 cool. and that is the end of this video which is a review video for Eyes of Fairy and Guard and it's on this channel called Board Gaming Ramblings yes. and you've been watching this video and I'm Johannes I'm Cinema. and this is the end bye